What up, what up, uh, fellow Tropians? This is Sean. Unfortunately, Ricky's not here to do the intro um, for this week's podcast, but he will be back uh, next week, hopefully. And uh, today we've got with us, obviously, me. We've got Justin Kim, our data scientist, and half of Agora Media with uh, Adrian Johnson. So it should be a good episode. Um, and yeah, this episode we wanted to talk about just... Uh, how the viewing experience differs between in-person, you know, watching sports, like going to live events, going to in-person games versus the experience of watching a game or a uh, tournament or anything like that from the comfort of your home, from the couch, from the bar, wherever you decide to, to enjoy your watching experience. So, um, yeah, um, I guess I wanted to start it off by just asking, you know, like, in general, like, with, I guess, your favorite sport, um, Justin, Adrian, what do you guys feel like is the best way to consume your, like, go-to sport that you would like watching? Adrian, you can go first. Yeah, no problem. Um, this may be biased because I actually work in sports, but I always say live. Uh, for probably 90% of all the sports. There's just an element that you can't ignore. It's uh, the excitement, the highs, the lows. For example, if you're watching um, the Laker game last night, Ricky's not here, so I, it's, it's, this is going to be a poor take, but <laughs> LeBron was down for the majority of that game. The Lakers were down for the majority of that game. Um, a lot of ebbs and flows, a lot of runs by each team. You can feel playoff atmosphere, what it would mean. The bubble was a, a different beast, but there's something to say about having to compete in an away field. Those Timberwolves just, they didn't seem to have the backing. It really seemed like it was 20,000 against 15. Um, and they struggled in that, in that environment. So, But to be in, in there, you could probably feel the goosebumps. Um, and that's a moment you're never going to forget. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's cool to watch away from the arena but if you're inside the arena for a moment like one of those it's it's breathtaking totally justin how about you uh for me i i i agree i like the live experience a lot better i mean i know sean you and i we went to go watch the ufc back last like a year ago with ricky and uh some of our sponsored athletes and that was so much fun that was my first uh, live ufc event and it's just it's such a different event i guess just because you know, in martial arts, it's like you never know when it's going to end. You never know when someone's going to win. You never know how someone's going to win, anything like that. And so it's almost like the shock of the moment is so crazy to experience with that energy whenever uh, you're in the actual arena. Because I, I, I watch fights like, you know, you can watch fights on TV at like an ale house or uh, you can watch it at your friend's house with like a group. And that's fun too. But when you're when you're in the arena and you're – 50 yards away from a guy getting knocked out <laughs> so crazily. It's just, it's such a crazy experience. And yeah, I, I think for, for combat sports, that's the way to do it. You have to, you have to experience that energy at least once if you're like a combat sports fan, you know? Yeah. So I, I think I'm more, a, more for the watching at home experience with some exceptions. Indeed. I think, I think, um, my main exception is college sports, specifically college football. I think all three of us went to UCF. Yeah. Um, going to games in the bounce house where you're surrounded by 40,000 UCF fans and you're all jumping and the floor feels like it's going to fall out from underneath you. Like, I've been to a couple games there where I was just like, there was nothing like that experience. And I, I would go to any UCF game ever if I lived in Orlando every year uh for the full year um but with that being said you know i think for example like combat sports i actually prefer watching it on tv i think i did like the atmosphere of being there but i think there's some sports where it's like i like being able to see the video from all these different angles and you get to see things like mm -hmm. and you they have like screens there obviously all, all stadiums nowadays have jumbotrons and stuff but when you can see like the instant slow-mo replay of the guy like barely getting his foot on that one blade of grass or like barely like you know like bending his body in a certain way i just think that that's kind of a really cool thing 
and also it's super comfortable to just be at home and you know like if i need to pause i don't like pausing sports or watching sports on delay but if there is a reason why i need to do so you can't do that at a live event obviously you need to be fully in the zone the whole time so um yeah i i think i'm more in favor than i would say the two of you of the at home experience but i will say that there's certain things i think football in particular um that and uh basketball i would say too that just kind of like the atmosphere makes it worth it um yeah and another question i wanted to ask you guys was how do you guys feel about in person like going to live sports in person when you're rooting for the away team versus rooting for the home team because i know adrian you kind of mentioned you know the home team experience is is great because you've got all these fans surrounding you and stuff but if you're the one you know dolphins fan surrounded by a bunch of eagles fans might not be the best experience for you i think it depends right i think it really depends on the sport um take golf you could have your favorite golfer and then you could not be a fan of a particular golfer and that that environment is not really um, chaotic but like who doesn't like an underdog story i feel like especially if, if your team comes out and wins um i feel like that's almost it feels even better than if it were to be a home game because you kind of stole one it, it felt like you weren't supposed to have it um and, and then you wind up getting the victory on it i think I think I kind of like it. Um, now, every market's not the same. Every team is not the same. Every sport's not the same. Every fan base is not the same. But I think um, I'm going to roll with the roll the dice on that one. Okay. I kind of like it. Justin, how about you? As a as a Cowboys fan living in Florida, it's tough because like everybody hates the Cowboys. So like <laughs> like. <laughs> Like I'll give you an example. I, I saw the Cowboys play in Tampa a couple of times, and that's that's fine. Like nobody's gonna do anything. Like I would go to that like anytime they come to Tampa. But like if if I lived in Philadelphia and I was a Cowboys fan, I don't think I would go to an Eagles game <laughs> where we're where the away team because I might not survive honestly. But I don't know. It's as a Cowboys fan, it's 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 tough just because so many people just like to crap on the team and all that stuff but in general i feel like it's fine i feel like especially the florida teams that nobody's the, the fan bases aren't super like aggressive at least not that i'm aware of you know i don't know i've heard jags fans can get pretty rowdy up really in, up in duval um but no i, I would agree duval with you county guys. something serious defense was made up there back in like 2014 or 15 whatever that good year was but I do agree with both of you that I think, you know, um, if the if the environment is OK and, you know, it's not like somewhere where you are genuinely fearing for your life, then I don't think it's an issue being on the away side. And I do think I agree with a what Adrian said that, you know, that kind of stealing one when you're the away team and like, you know, if your team score is like none of the home fans are going to be cheering for your team if they're there, if you're the away team so it's like you get to be like that one supporter that's like yeah like we scored like we did something good um and then you you know get stuff thrown at you but the one depending on where you are it might be not so much the one experience that i remember that i i would say it was not a good experience was i was it, it was a, it was a cowboys game in cowboys stadium on thanksgiving I went to the game and I was like, wow, this stadium's amazing. I'm so excited to see see the, the team play and stuff. And we played the Chargers and they destroyed us on Thanksgiving by like 30 points. That was that, that I think that would be worse than like if we were the away team or something. Like that was just I have like trauma from that from that memory. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like it's it's always fun when you when it's a home team is supposed to win. Yeah, and the moment that the home team loses, the away fans get all the glory, and the home team is left with like the home fans are like, "This is this is terrible." Yeah, on Thanksgiving too, I was I was heartbroken. Yeah, that that's brutal as a Cowboys fan, you know, with them being the one of the big Thanksgiving games every year, you know, like you that's gotta you gotta win that game, especially at home. Yeah. Ugh. 
bad memories, but we'll we'll get that back soon. So what would you guys say is your favorite sport to watch live? I like I like okay. what, oh go ahead. Yeah. You take it, Justin. I gotta think about it some more. I would just say, yeah, I would probably stick with combat sports just because uh, you know, working with Andre and like Chris, some of our sponsored athletes, on, on like a local level, the combat sports is it's insane. Like the energy that comes out of like a small auditorium in a Hilton is unbelievable. <laughs> It's so much fun, and yeah, I, I think as of recently, probably combat sports. I'm going to add to that. I think combat sports is always going to be a good one, especially like when you have marquee matchups. For example, the Adesanya fight from this past weekend, like that, there was so much buildup to that fight uh, from when he lost before, and now he's coming back to reclaim like his, his glory, like to – be at that particular match like and the way that he won that that happy spectacular so like live combat sports for sure yeah. if you went to more like tra- quote unquote traditional sports i think college football mm. is amazing live um similar type of feel where you have the home crowd because everyone that's a fan of that team it's not just um 60,000 people and they're kind of some could be Bears fans it's like everyone went to that school and everyone's supporting that team and then you have the away fans that are there so like I think that dynamic um, is really really fun especially when the home team wins shout out UCF any UCF football game for the past like I don't know five years has been more or less for the past five years has been amazing Um, and then I'm going to throw out hockey that's it's crazy, especially playoff hockey. Shout out April twelfth coming up, um, playoff starting up. But that playoff hockey is different. Uh, but hockey live, it's it's just next level. It's crazy. Yeah, for me, I, I think combat sports is up there, especially if you have like emotional investment in one of the fighters. So whether you know someone who's fighting or if like your favorite fighter is fighting like then like Justin was there when we were rooting for or I was rooting for Hamza I don't know if they oh, were rooting for Hamza um and I was going crazy I was like praying during the fight I was like come on like do something amazing and it like when you have that emotional connection it I think that that that's what really makes the in-person experience incredible um which leads me to my main answer which is exactly what adrian said college football i'm always emotionally invested in ucf i'm always sad when they lose eventually and somewhat let me down um but going to those games you know i think that's the most emotionally invested i'm i'm in sports in general um and then if i had to choose another one i would actually say baseball um the reason being that i don't think baseball is great to watch on tv i agree i think being there in person is better than watching it on tv therefore i would rather watch baseball in person um and it's just kind of like a cool thing you know like you just go and you chill you eat a couple hot dogs or peanuts or whatever you get at a baseball game these days you spend like 50 bucks for a beer and then you know you call it a night um so I think I think those would be my top three. Um, but yeah, no, I think, uh, yeah. I did go to a Solar Bears game one time, and that was so much fun. Have you ever been oh. to one of those? Shout out the Orlando Solar Bears. <laughs> oh, man, that is an experience. Great plug. Yeah. Great I have plug. never been to a Solar Bears game, but I've heard they Oh, man, it, it, it's amazing. Sean, when you move back, we're Inflatable, going to Bears yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> Inflatable fun. bear at pregame. Okay. Um, they skate out the bear. It's it's wow. Start yeah. to finish, great experience. And also shout and they, out. They fill. Go ahead. I was gonna say they fill out a good chunk of the the bowl too, like for a minor league hockey team. Um, at Amway Center, which if you haven't seen it, 
I'm recommending fly there. The tickets are are cheap. The food is great. There's Gringos Locos Taco that you can get on game days. Like, enjoy it. It's a great experience. I remember, uh, I, was it the XFL that we used to have, or that we that came back to Berlin? Yeah. I went to one of the uh, games, yeah. I went to one of the games like five years ago, and that was that was actually a really cool experience. It was at the UC, UCS. Yeah. Stadium. I remember at halftime they threw a frisbee for a dog to go fetch, and it broke like a world record or something. It was crazy. Yeah. Was it the was that the XFL or was that the uh, Alliance of American AAF. Football? AAF. 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 Oh. Orlando Apollos undefeated. undefeated. Yeah. <laughs> and champions. Is. I think they got crowned champions that year too. Yeah, it was awesome. And now you have what the Guardians or the new team? The X. Uh, are we the Guardians? I think I so. Can, I want to say yes. All I know is Let's that. Let's do a Google search. Let's Google. All I know is that they messed up and they made them USF colors, but they play oh, at really? UCF Stadium. Oh, that's bad. They, yeah, there should have been some more market research on that uh, <laughs> on the back end. We would have got a lot. We would have got 60,000 people to sign up instantly. We got the right colors. Just, just make it black and gold. Yeah. <laughs> have you guys ever been to Orlando City? I have been to an Orlando City game. That was interesting. I I actually do like watching soccer in person too. I yes, I went to agreed agreed. I went to a Red Bulls game like back back in the day, and I loved the fact that the announcers would announce the score in English, and then announce it again in Spanish. I don't speak Spanish, <laughs> but every time they they announce the other team because like the the Red Bulls ended up winning that game like two nothing. So that with it, uh, like I loved when they were like, you know, Red Bulls, uh, dos, Washington, whatever, zero, and I was like, zero, yeah. <laughs> that was like the only word I needed to know. I was like, cool. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, soccer live, soccer live is great. Um, I don't think TV can do it justice. Just how like hard that they play, um, and how like taxing it is. Like who. That has to be one of the hardest sports. It's like that in hockey to be moving constantly over and over and over again, no stops, just keep going. Um, hockey, of course, you have like the intermission stops, but for the most part, you could skate up and down. Um, but for 90 minutes, 90 plus minutes, you're just in a slight jog of some sort. That's it's. I think that gets into like, quick question. Who do you think, and this may be off script here, most athletic athletes, what sport do they come from? Uh, this was, it was like a debate that we had a while back in the office. Um, and interesting answers. So I'm just going to pose it here. Like, who do you think has the best athletes? Like, wait, most athletic or best? Or like most talented? Like fastest, I'd go with track. <laughs> um, that's a good question. Let's go, let's go talent wise. Like talent athleticism. I've said for a while that I think that hockey is the most difficult sport to play because let alone like let alone trying to control a puck with a stick. You're trying to do it on ice and you have to skate the whole time. Then you have to skate backwards and defend while it's skate. Like I can barely skate regularly, let alone skate while also playing a sport. So I think that in terms of like talent, like skill that it would take to play a sport, I think hockey is extremely, extremely difficult. Um, if you're talking about pure athleticism, I would change my answer to either football or basketball. I think for me, I think my answer would probably be wrestling. I think about like Olympic wrestling. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That is a good one. And actually, one thing that uh, I I didn't realize how how grueling it was is judo. Have you guys ever followed like Olympic judo? It is yeah grueling, man. It's I had no idea it was like that. I thought it was kind of like a just I don't know. I thought it was like karate or something. But then I listened to a podcast recently of like Travis Stevens. 
who's like he was like the first American to medal in the Olympics for judo, and I had no idea it was that gru that grueling. It's it's insane. And that uh, wow. And wow. judo yeah. is what like what kind of martial art is that? Judo is like where you do like it's they wear like the geese and stuff, and they do like hip throws and like throws over their shoulder and like it's okay. all about like slamming people flat on their back. That's Ipon, they call it. That's like the whole goal is you're supposed to slam someone as hard as you can. <laughs> that sounds painful. Yeah. <laughs> if you should Adrian, watch, what about you? Watch some judo highlights after this. <laughs> Adrian, I, how about, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, like, I had the, the exact same response. Um, I said hockey um, for the ship, simple fact that it's, I don't understand, I just don't understand how to do it. I really don't. It's, same. like, I don't know. We, running track, like, all other sports make sense. Where you get a ball, you put it into a net, or... You have some type of device or you yourself have to end somewhere. You're, you're going somewhere. But, and it's, but it's always like one, pretty much like one direction. You're always going pretty much forward for the most part. This is the one sport that you're going backwards, diagonalies, diagonalies, diagonal, like sideways, all in your feet while also doing something different with your upper body. It's like that in golf, which I think golf could be slept on as like a most talented athletes because of the way that they have great golfers can place a ball directly where they want it to, which is kind of crazy to think about. So like, I think those two are, are, are pretty close for me. Um, but that I was right with you where you are, Sean, where it's like basketball or football for sheer like power, raw athleticism, just – um, God-given gifts where no one else has been like you can't be this big, this strong, this fast, and move. Um, yeah. They never get hurt. Like that's that's not common. But uh, golf or, or hockey for, for most like talented baseball not, is up there too. I think that's that's impressive too. Not to mention with hockey, not only are you trying to do all this stuff, it's a contact sport. People are very much allowed to hit you. While you're trying to skate and control, I'm like, like that to me is unfathomable. It's like, okay, like I might be able to skate down the rink with the puck and maybe not lose control of it, but not while someone is also decking me into a plexiglass board. That <laughs> yeah, that's like, just ridiculous. Yeah, it's exactly that. You have to. Not only did I all the things that we've mentioned for the past twenty five, like past five minutes, but you also have to do that while also not getting hit. Or getting up from getting hit, or do it while getting hit. Um, yeah, that's that's crazy. That's mind-boggling. That's What's crazy. funny is I actually somewhat disagree with the the idea of golf, in the sense that I I do think it's hard. I don't think the golf is easy, but there is nothing like if you can just hit a ball straight and far and you understand what all of your clubs do you can be decent at golf not like professional i think the professional level correct. is different correct yeah i think there's a gap there's definitely a gap yeah um but like the higher end talents of all the, the sports the highest level yes you're, I would like, agree with you. you're like you're you're that's it's, that's it's like these aren't human beings i don't think it's either you have to i don't know I've written my name in cursive so many times and it still looks terrible. I don't know how they can correctly and accurately hit a ball in, in a place that they want to hit it to. Um, shout out my bowlers out there bowling. That's also impressive. Um, but that's a skill you can develop over time. I think it takes less athleticism for that. And it's a little bit less skillful, a little bit. But like once you get the, the practice, I think it's easy. Yeah relatively okay like when a lot of people get hit a strike there's not really changes in wind but like factor in natural and natural elements and you can still do what you what you can do i think that's that's like all right you've edged up on like the on the the athlete meter for me 
Where do you guys put soccer players on that list since that's kind of like what started the whole conversation? Uh, I can take this first because yeah, go ahead. I think Adrian's thinking. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was a weird not, think face, right? <laughs> I I would not put them as highly as most other sports, personally. I think stamp stamina wise, I think soccer is, you know, like I like Adrian said, you're going basically forty five minutes nonstop and then another forty five minutes nonstop. And you're pretty much supposed to be moving the whole time and, you know, like adjusting where the ball goes and stuff like that. And in general, soccer, you know, like controlling the ball while not letting it get stolen by the other team is not particularly easy. I also wasn't ever good at soccer when I did play it. So but to put that in perspective, I'm I'm not good at it. I'm not saying it's easy from the sense of, oh, yeah, I'm great at this. Um, but... I don't think that there's anything about soccer that, like, is particularly, like, impossible to learn. Or, like, like, I don't know. like, I think you can make someone into a good, like, dribble. Like, you can, like, help someone become a better dribbler. Maybe not, like, you know, messy level dribbling or anything like that. But you, you can make someone into a good dribbler. You can work on stamina. Anyone can get better stamina. Again, maybe not at the level of a professional soccer player, but um, I think teaching someone how to play soccer would be way easier than teaching someone how to be, you know, a professional golfer. You think it's or a professional I think hockey that's, player? I think that part's true. Uh, I think that part's true. Um, the way, way I kind of split from you, Sean, is at a certain level, like there are there are certain footballers for soccer context um, that if you were to approach them and try to take the ball away from them, you just can't. Um, in the sim, and you can't hit them in their sport, or, or you can try to, and they would still just get away from you. So I think there's like a. For the average soccer player, I think you can you can say that, but like the top ten percent of like all time world class footballers, I think that's like that's very I'd put them toe to toe with a golfer. Not quite hockey. I don't think it's hockey level, but Cause... I would say it's like hockey golf, baseball, soccer are at like the same level for me. Like difficulty of playing the sport wise because it's very hard to hit. It's very hard to pitch. Because um, my argument to I, that would be, you know, you put any person, any normal person up in baseball against a top level major league pitcher and I think they could throw – I think they could strike them out a hundred times in a row without letting up. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And vice versa, if you put anybody up and say, "Hey, try to strike out this major league batter," they're not going. They're going to get. They're going to hit home runs probably fifty percent of the time and hit very strong line drives the other thirty-five percent, and then maybe like a couple fly out something like that. Um, and then you know when you look at something like basketball. You put any like normal person one on one with LeBron James, I'm sorry, LeBron's gonna beat you 100 to zero. Like I don't think that any of us are scoring a point on LeBron James, unless you're shooting from half court and you can make it. That's the only way you're scoring. And even then, he might still block you because he knows he's faster than you, bigger than you, and every possible way better than you at basketball. So, what about boxing? What about like Floyd Mayweather? I think that's I think that's kind of the argument that I was making is any sport if you take the top person and put him up against someone who's not professionally trained in that sport you're not touching them <laughs> you're not going to touch yeah I I don't think that if I was in a fight with Floyd Mayweather that I could even land a punch on him before I would be unconscious and dead so 
word. I, I don't know. It's interesting, though. There's, I mean, but I think you could say that about any sport. I don't think any, you know, regular person. Well, actually, golf is interesting, right? Because the golf Masters is the only one that anyone can play, and there's there's anyone could on a good day if you're if, if you if you know if you played you know the course um, uh, that you you could have a shot of well, being equal to a Masters player. But not really. Well, like, o- over the course of like eighteen holes, I don't think you're gonna get there. But I think well, an can... interesting study about that then would be looking at right. The Masters just happened. There was an amateur who was, I think, in the lead or st- one stroke off from the lead after like the first round and even the first two rounds. He was up in the top, you know, a couple people. That's an amateur beating, you know supposedly the top professionals in golf from not only PGA, but also from lit. Like, so he's beating all the best golfers. Now, granted, he ended up finishing lower, I think somewhere in the teens or something like that, but still he made the cut, you know? So if you're looking at it from that perspective, I don't think an amateur in some of these other sports we've mentioned beats a professional ever. And this guy just beat a bunch of them. So yeah, I, I think I think golf, you know, like you and not to say that there's amateurs that or not to say that amateurs are not near a professional level anyways, because most of those guys are very good and are planning to go pro at some point. But um, I do think that golf is one of those ones that can not like the average person isn't going to catch up to a professional. But if you've been practicing golf a decent like a good amount and like you kind of honed in on your skill you could potentially compete on your best day with maybe someone who's much better than you's not so good day. And everyone has not so good days in golf. So I'm bad at golf every day. So I don't know. Same. Uh, What's on the Wii? I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very so far. Um, another, that brings up another sport, tennis. So I think it's the same type of situation where like, you take any professional tennis player against any average, they're, they're that's not fair. It's like they're waxing the floor with you. You're probably not even getting a hit. They're probably getting aces twenty four seven. Another sport, underrated athletes. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I could see that. Um, so we've talked about a bunch of stuff, a bunch of sports, live sports, watching at home. Are there any sports that you two would say you prefer to watch at home? Um, yes. So, and I'll I'll take this two ways. One, um, I like watching basketball when the right announcers are announcing the game at home. Um, the right commentators, just because. I love the chemistry that they talk through the game with, and it adds a little a different element than you would have it at in arena. In arena is great, but for example, the Mike the Mike shout out of Bang for Game Six Miami Heat versus the Warriors, like that was a great great moment. That if you were in arena, you felt a different energy, but you didn't hear Bang, you but you saw it. But I watched it and I heard that. So now like that's stuck in my brain forever. Um, and that was like a very, very interesting moment. Um, I think I think it depends on the moment, but like larger, like this is a, a, a I think basketball and then some combat sports, like main cards, I, I love to watch them on, the, on TV because I, I just love the commentators. Um, Joe Rogan always whenever there's a knockout I, I look for his reaction like the first thing I go through to on Twitter Instagram is I go to what was Joe Rogan's reaction to this knockout or this fight because I want to see him do this yeah. like, that's like the best part of like watching the fight uh, to me Justin how about you Um, favorite sports that I pre- or sports that I prefer to watch at home um Oh no, that's a good question. Because I feel like the sports that I prefer to watch at home are sports that I just like 
I, I kind of watch like very casually, I guess, sports that I'm not like, I don't follow super intensely, you know, like I'm not like a crazy involved like basketball fan, but like I like watching it during the playoffs and stuff like that. I think that's when it gets really exciting, but um, yeah, probably basketball. I think that's probably my answer. Yeah. My answer would probably, oh, go ahead. Another one before you go, Formula One. Okay. Shout out the Netflix series. That was great. Yeah. Got me into watching Formula One. And I'll, I keep going back for more Formula One. Um, I don't keep up during the season, but I will wait a whole year for me to find out what happens next year on season three or season four, whatever it's, season they're on. It's a good one. I would, say, I would say for me, it's any sport that I'm not emotionally invested in, I'd yeah. probably rather watch at home, right? Because if you're going to have like a whole day dedicated to a sport, like you want to be, you know, seeing your favorite team or seeing a team you're rooting for. Like there'd be no reason for me to go to a Cowboys Bucks game, for example, because <laughs> I, I'd just be like, I would be like entertained because it's football, but I would not have an emotional reason to root for either team. And I would just kind of be like, eh. so I'd rather watch something like that at home. Um, I also think March uh, March Madness is something that I'd rather watch at home because especially in those early rounds, be the, the ability to be on your TV and there's three different games on and when there's a commercial, you switch to the other game and you got like, you can basically watch three buzzer beaters typically in the beginning and like upsets and all that stuff. Like that's so fun to watch at home to me. I don't know if I would want to go to one game unless i had a team like ucf that was playing that i really was rooting for um i don't know if i'd want to miss the opportunity to see multiple games and just to watch one happen that's a good point that's kind of like with nfl nfl sunday i don't know if you guys like red zone or if you guys like watching one specific yeah. game but i like watch like how they like go back and forth to all the different games and stuff like that especially if you play fantasy it's exciting so I, I for on like normal Sundays, like if the Cowboys aren't playing, like I love watching like Red Zone and just seeing all of it at once, you know. I would agree with that as well. Um, shout out my number one finish in fantasy. Debatable. Yeah, that was because uh, I just didn't check my lineup for uh, for one week. That would have been me, but it's all good. It's always next year. Um, I had the best yeah, draft, but. but... Was there anything else that you guys had uh, for this podcast? I think we're good. Cool. Yeah, so, wraps it uh, up. yeah. Thank you, everyone, who spent the time listening to us talk and ramble about sports. It's always fun. Um, if you are not already, please subscribe to our YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, TikTok, LinkedIn, wherever you want to follow us, um, at Extropian Tech. Um, is, is that at Extropian Tech.com or at Extropian underscore tech, something like that? I forget what, what it is. Um, but yeah, and thank you for, for listening. Um, and yeah, hope to be back next week. And, you know, hopefully we'll get Ricky back on here. Get Raul back on here at some point and uh, keep providing great content for you guys. Peace.